In this lesson, we'll discuss the basic concepts of reaction kinetics and the rate laws. When we mix together the reactants for a reaction, the products don't always appear instantaneously. They may take some time to form. The speed at which the products appear is called the rate of the reaction. For example, in this reaction, 2B goes to 1P plus 3Q plus 4R. The rate of appearance of the product P is defined as dP dt. The rate is always in units of concentration over time, which is usually molar over seconds. If you have a reaction that produces several products, such as in this reaction, the product's rates of appearance are always related to each other through stoichiometry. Because every time you make 1P, you get 3 Qs, the rate of appearance of Q is three times faster than P. We usually define one uniform rate for the entire reaction by dividing the rate of appearance of each product by a sto stoichiometric coefficient. So the following three rates are equal to each other. dp dt equals one-third dq dt equals one-fourth dr dt. While the products are formed, the reactants are destroyed. The concentrations of the reactants therefore decreases and their rates of change are negative. We usually turn the rate of the reactants into a positive number by multiplying it by negative 1 to define the rate of disappearance. For example, if the rate of disappearance of B is 3.4 molar per second, dB dt would be minus 3.4. For this reaction, the rate of disappearance of B is also related to the other rates by a stoichiometric coefficient. The rates of most chemical reactions are sensitive to how much reactants are present. Reactions usually start out fast when there are lots of reactants and slow down gradually as reactants are depleted. How sensitive the rate is to the amount of reactant present is called the rate law. For the reaction here, we expect the rate to depend on the concentration of the reactant B. Usually the rate is proportional to the B concentration to some power. We write this as negative one-half dB dt equals a proportionality constant times the B concentration to power y. We can move the one-half to the other side and write negative dB dt equals k times B to power y, where k is the rate constant. The power y is called the order of the reaction. Very often, y is either 1 or 2. When y equals 1, the kinetics is first order. The equation is called the first order differential rate law. On the other hand, when y equals 2, the kinetics is second order, and the equation is called the second order differential rate law. Compared to a first order reaction, the rate of a second order reaction is more sensitive to the concentration of the reactants. If you know how much reactant you start with and the rate law, which tells you how fast the reactant is disappearing, you can predict the concentration of B at any time. If you know calculus, the concentration of B can be computed by integrating the differential rate law. The resulting equation which gives the concentration of B at any time t is called the integrated rate law. Of course, first order and second order reactions would have different integrated rate equations. For first order reactions, log of b at time t equals log of b at time 0 minus kt. For second order reactions, 1 over b at time t equals 1 over b at time 0 plus kt. Other than using the integrated rate law to predict the concentration of reactant b for any time t, we can also use them to determine the order of the reaction. If you measure the concentration of B during the reaction at different times, a plot of log B versus time should give you a straight line if the reaction is first order. If instead, if 1 over B versus time gives you a straight line, the reaction is second order. For some reactions, the order is neither 1 nor 2. It could be 0 or even a fraction. Finally, the units of the rate constant k is sometimes confusing because the units for a first order k is different from a second order k. 
the proper units for the rate constant is defined by the differential rate laws above. For the units to come out being the same on both sides of the equation, k must be in units of 1 over seconds for first order reactions or 1 over molar over seconds for second order reactions. In the next lesson we'll talk about reaction mechanisms.